Welcome to the mustache and the beard.com. Two great geeks changing the world one post at a time. My name is Louis Matos. I am the mustache. Joining Are me you? today, as always, is my buddy, Tina Figueroa here, aka the beard, coming to you live from sunny Puerto Rico. I can actually say that today. No. Coming to you live from sunny Puerto Rico. We've been having a lot of thunderstorms, but today's a pretty nice day. There's some dark clouds in the horizon, but I'm not going to get upset about that. And it's hot. And it is hot. <laughs> it is the tropics. Right. Uh, if sweat was money, we'd be rich. <laughs> All right, so uh, how about we just do a little bit of uh, why do we do a get out of jail segment? That's what we're doing now, right? Get, yeah, out, get of out of jail free. free. Get out of jail free. Yes. Our video number one. First, uh, first uh, video for Get Out of Jail Free on its own. Yeah, because it's like the Monopoly card. Get Out of Jail Free, community chest, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so what? what is Get Out of Jail Free? When you get out of jail free. Yeah. <laughs> um, we used to not be able to see each other more than once during the course of the week. Now we actually do more than <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, I'm practically living here. Uh, um. Uh, jail is, especially now, that, that, uh, that we're on lockdown, right? Uh, jail is all the things that we're required to do during the week. You know. Shave, brush our teeth. Yeah. Go to the bathroom. Poop, uh, shower and shave. Um, no, also, you know, laundry, cooking, dishes, mopping, sweeping, you know. Yeah, chores. Chores, right? That's jail. Get out of jail free as the things that we do to not do that. <laughs> the things that we do um, as an excuse to not avoid, avoid avoid all the chores. Avoid all the chores. And in our particular case, because of uh, the way we are, it generally involves uh, reading, either books or, or, or comics, or, you know, stuff to read. Pulp stuff. Uh, or um, watching TV or watching movies. It's a, it, it could also involve um, playing video games. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, but we haven't done that in a while. We haven't done that in, in a while. Uh, we need a, a, a new uh, console. A new console. But uh, yes, you know, it, it, it's all, all those, all that great geek stuff. Yeah, and, and because. We've done so much get out of jail free stuff that uh, on lockdown, it's kind of become uh, pretty long. So we decided to move it from red capers to having its own video. So and as we relax the lockdown, I'm sure we'll be doing less because I eventually do have to go back to school. Yeah, but um, but for now, it, it's ba ba basically what we're going to do is share. Many reviews yeah, so. of stuff that, and and so the stuff that we've done may actually become a post or or, mm -hmm. or another video, but uh, for right now, this is what we did during the week. Yes. And as you can tell that, that you know, we really enjoy uh, not doing our chores. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. Uh -huh. Oh my God. Uh, Since you have more recommendations, we're going to also alternate. Right, we're going to do it this time. With one, me one, him one, like that. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you from the top in no particular order. It's not in order of importance or even in order of, 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 of how I did it, right? Uh, on the top of my list, I, I read Batman and the Outsiders numbers issues one through twelve. Okay, the first year. The first year, year I did, I did year one. Um, again, I recommend. Read comics online. Dot to. Dot to. It is, uh, you can read comics for free. Okay? And you don't have to sign up. You don't have to pay for anything. It just, just, um, get on and, 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 and in the search, type in the comic that, or the character that you're looking for, and boom, and read comics for free. So, uh, uh Batman and the Outsiders was a Silver Age. Uh, a team, uh, team book, 
1980s, sort of, they were around about. Right? No, no, 19, 19, uh, uh, yeah, 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 early 80s, early, uh, uh, the early like, 80s, early 80s, early 80s, yeah, um, before crisis, mm. uh, <laughs> yeah, before crisis, Batman, uh, can't get the Justice League's help on, on, well, basically Lucius Fox, um, traveled to Markovia and gets kidnapped. And uh, Batman wants the Justice League to help him free uh, Lucius Fox. And the Justice League says that the State Department asked him to sit this one out. And they're going to listen to the State Department. So basically Batman says, screw you and the, and the State Department. And he goes to, to uh, rescue uh, Lucius Fox. He recruits, uh, I, think, I believe it's Metamorpho. But in the course of the adventure, he meets... Uh, Geoforce, he meets uh, yeah. uh, Katana, he meets Halo. Uh, uh, oh no, he recruits Black Lightning. He recruits Black Lightning to help him. And in the course of the adventure, they, they meet Metamorpho, Katana, Geoforce, and Halo. And after after it's over, he decide they decide to stay together and become Batman's team. In Gotham City. It's really good. I remember oh, Jim Aparo artwork. So, oh, oh, Batman's has very yes. pointy ears. Oh, fantastic artwork. Mike Barr, uh, was, uh, the, writer. the writer. Great, great. Okay, listen. Uh, just a warning. It is Silver Age. Okay? So it does have some Silver Age stuff that that is, um, that, you know, we don't do in the modern age anymore. Like, for example, uh, Dr. Jace who gives Geoforce his, his uh, powers, um, she's like an all-around scientist, you know? She's a scientist yeah. and, and everything, you know? It, it, it's none of this, you know, the uh, physicist, biologist, chemist. No, she's, you know... She's, she, she, she sciences stuff. She sciences... It becomes a verb. Yes. I'm you know. sciencing. <laughs> <laughs> Which was very... That was very uh, Silver Age. You know, like Reed Richards could do everything. Tony Stark could do everything. Henry Pym, who started out as an entomologist, could do uh, uh, Bill's Ultron. You know, they, 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 could, they could do everything. So there is there is some stuff like that. But man, that I love these issues, and I and I got such a kick out of reading it, uh, reading those first twelve issues uh, all over again. And I recommend it. I highly, yeah, I, I do highly too. recommend. I remember it. being. I think I'm. You, you got me wanting to go check it out again. Yes, because I used yes. to love those four, those those characters. Those, absolutely. Um, one of the things that I watched this week that uh, I want to tell you about is Poison Rose. It is a. I. It's a, supposed to be a mystery. Right. Um, which is one of the reasons why I watched it this week. I was like, hey, that 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 seems like. I mean, it has John Travolta. It has Morgan Freeman, it has Fomka Jansen, it has Brendan Fraser, and it also has Ella Blue Travolta. So I was like, hey, that looks interesting. And it starts off very Mickey Spillane with yeah, the... Very, very film noir. Yeah, very noir, right? And and they do the, the whole voiceover of, you know, gambling always gets me in trouble. Gambling and dames. You know, and it's like... So, so you get that whole private investigator narrating, you know, some of his weaknesses and how they're going to play out to, in the story. Uh, one of the other interesting things that I found out was that this received a director's... The directors are three directors and they receive an award for directing. Three directors? Three directors, yeah. I know, it's, it's pretty weird. And so, so I've been watching it and thinking... This is going to be good. And it's not a horrible movie. So the first thing I want to say, it's not a horrible movie. But you know, immediately when I give that caveat, I'm going to <laughs> tell you other things about it. It is not necessarily a great mystery. Because I think 9 out of 10 of you that watch this movie are going to figure out who the killer is. It's too easy. It's just too easy. Uh, and you're going to know why and all of that. It's just, it's, it didn't, usually it takes you a while and it, and most, most times you're wrong on, uh, on mysteries. Yes, yeah, and, and that's part of the fun. Part of the fun is to try and figure it out and they give you all the clues, but I think you're like, 
I think I know who did it and why. And so it, it's not, it took away some of my fun. Uh, again, not a bad movie, but not a good movie. All right. So as a consequence, I'm going to give it two great geeks. I'm going to tell you, you can watch it. I mean, Blue, uh, Ella Blue Travolta is really sweet in this thing. And you're like, okay, she is like in her 20s, so she's not a little girl. But uh, her with her dad, there's this good uh, chemistry. Famke Jansen is really good. Brendan Fraser it looks horrible. I mean, he, <laughs> he looks older and chunkier. And I'm not judging, but no, that's the way I'm is. older and chunkier too. That's the way he is now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, not overall a great movie. I would not recommend it. It is on Amazon. I'm giving it two great geeks because, again, there are some good touches. I love the whole uh, noir aspect, but they should have done better with the script. Okay, uh, my uh, next is... Um uh, uh, again, keeping with the uh, comics, I got into a um, into a pulp uh, mood, and so I read a, a, a comic, Doc Savage versus the Shadow, a two issue special, and uh, this is by no means the first time that they have teamed up Doc Savage with the Shadow. Uh, but what was interesting about this one is that there is a killer on the loose and Doc Savage is convinced that it's the shadow. Oh. So he treats he's treating the shadow as a uh, as a bad guy. Kind of like a Batman versus Superman. Right, exactly. So it's very much uh, in that vein. It also, it's a story because a part of the action takes place on the Hindenburg. Okay? And then they, they do explain that, that there is one of the bad guys is very um, shadow-like. Mm. So it's a case of mistaken identity. Uh, everything gets tied up at the end. The artwork was 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 good. Um, smartly, um, they only used uh, for for Doc Savage. They only used Monk and and Ham. Okay. Not his whole his, his whole, whole crew. crew. Mm -hmm. And and in, in and the shadow is pretty much operating uh, on his own. They do uh, show. Uh, Shrevy, the uh, the taxi driver, right? But there's no uh, Margot Lane, there's no Harry Vincent. It's pretty much so. It is. Um, there wasn't a lot of superfluous characters taking up uh, taking up space. You know, it, it was uh, it was neat. It wasn't no yeah, slim down. No, yeah, it wasn't no no not neat filler. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the artwork. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed uh, reading the two issues. And and I recommend it. Uh, Doc Savage. Versus the shadow, uh, two issues special. Yeah, did you give uh, any two great an, uh, an amount of great geeks on that? Rating? I would, I would give it four. I would okay. give it a four. Oh wow, four uh, great geeks. That's a high recommend. Yeah, I would, I would give it. And a the four. same thing with the Batman and the Outsiders. Oh no, Batman and the Outsiders. That's it's five. Well, at four least at least four and a half. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that's no, that was that's that's I, a good, I, yeah, that's I a good four and a half. Completely concur, and I haven't read them in I don't know twenty yeah. years. There was one other movie that I saw this this week that I uh, am going to talk about. This one's a little better. I start off with the worst and I'm going to get to the better. Uh, Overlord, which I, I saw. It is a 2018 movie. Um, it wa it's a war horror movie is how they've, they've classified it. And so I would agree with that. It is produced by J.J. Abrams, your favorite producer. <laughs> and so I, I, I was dubious when I first started watching it. And I'll tell you, I loved the first half. The whole war part. Suspenseful. Gripping. The characters are really good. Um, and then somewhere in the middle, it becomes a super soldier serum movie. And that super soldier serum has become a trope. Yeah. That is just. Yeah. Yes. And you know what? If they would have stuck with the soup, you know, with the with the soldiers, the army stuff, it was scary enough with that. I don't understand you why. Want, you want to you want to know something? What? That it, it, that's it's in the uh, the Doc Savage versus the Shadow. Yeah. The, uh, uh, super soldiers. 
And, and, and they even had uh, the scientist, uh, Professor Reinstein, which was the name, of, uh, the original name for the scientist for Captain America. Oh, Marvel. really? Yes. Oh, God. Yeah, and so, I mean, it has some good actors in it. Giovanna Depo, Wyatt Russell, the son of Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. um, he's become a really good actor. Uh, he's in his 30s. He was a, a hockey player and turned uh, actor. Better actor than hockey, hockey player. player. <laughs> uh, Bokeem Woodbine plays a nice, oh, I love interesting, him. I love interesting him. role. Uh, yeah, so... So I'm going to say the first half is great, and the last half not so great. Now, for some people would like it. I mean, it's still it's still a good movie, It's but it just goes, it, it's just they're two different movies, you know? The first half is not... You're describing, to me, you're describing J.J. Abrams, okay? Because <laughs> this is how I, I, I feel about everything that he does. The first part, he does great, great and then and he, he just switches it. it. Yes. He just switches. Like it, 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 uh, it wasn't good enough to have a war movie. I got to make it now a monster movie. And, you know, and some people describe it online as... as uh, they, they, they're va uh, not vampires, they're zombies, and it's like I, I hate that because it, 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 not you know, if it was going to be a zombie movie for, from the beginning, make it that, but you know, you can't just switch midway. It was good, I was liking the movie that you had before, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna say three gray geeks because, like I said, right down mm -hmm. the middle, first half is great. The last half, not so great. Some people might like it. I mean, if you're okay to switch, like if it would have been all the 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 monsters from the beginning, then there wouldn't have been a switch. I might have liked it. I don't know. It's just the switch somehow from really, I was loving the suspense. And then you do that, you messed it up for me. So, Three Great Geeks, not a horrible. It's good for us. Mm -hmm. It is a good... Uh, right, that's, a, that's a good rating. Yeah, so I, I didn't want to trash the... You know, throw out the baby with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. So, what's next? Okay. Um, again, still with the comics. Still with the Pope. Oh, wow. I, uh... I, uh yeah, I tell you, I got into this... I, pulp, I, didn't, pulp I didn't read any yeah. comics. I, um... I, I read... Uh, DC's initial run for Justice Incorporated. Now, Justice Incorporated is uh, uh, the the hero is called the Avenger, right? But for obvious reasons, they didn't want to call the comic the Avenger, right? Right. In the in in the pulp books of the 1940s, the Avenger had a group. Uh, all these pulp characters. They had they had that gang. They had a gang that that, that uh, a support mm -hmm. support crew. The Avenger did also. Only in his book, they had a name. They were called Justice Incorporated, and their headquarters had a, a plaque that said Justice Incorporated. So you could come knock on the door. So wisely, DC decided to call the comic Justice Incorporated, starring the Avenger. Mm -hmm. The Avenger is supposed to be a character. That was created by Do uh, the creator of Doc Savage wasn't really uh, the Kenneth Robeson is was a house name, so yeah he's created by Kenneth Robeson but there was no one Kenneth Robeson Kenneth Robeson was whoever wrote the Doc the, the uh, Doc Savage but there was like five of them, but uh, it was uh, he's a very popular character Moonstone is doing uh, books on on revived uh, Justice Incorporated and the Avenger and he's going strong. Uh, these four issues was an attempt to uh, get, uh, catch, um, to generate interest in, in the character. It didn't work. It didn't work. I think it was a little too early. It was it was too uh, ahead of its time. However, the writing is by Denny O'Neill. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. All right. Well, he was Dennis. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Denny O'Neill. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Shakespeare of comics. And um, the first and issue. And you don't mean that facetious. No, no, not at all. No, no, no. I am a huge yeah, O'Neill fan. fan. Absolutely. Are you kidding? Uh, absolutely. Uh, 
one of the few writers that, that if I see his name on something, I, I, I'll pick it up regardless of who did the artwork or, 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 or what. So, um, uh, he does a good do uh, job of adapting the, 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 the books to, 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 uh, to the comics. The only problem is that he's doing one book per comic. So he's taking a book and, and turning it into a 20 page uh, comic. That's tough. And that's, boy, you know, you know how much he, 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 he cut from that? Mm -hmm. But the first issue was drawn by Al Williamson. This, this, this is, uh, this is, you know, a god among, among, uh, comic artists. He's the one who took over Flash Gordon from, when, uh, from Alex Raymond. Mm -hmm. And, and, I mean, he, he's up there like with Will Eisner, you know. So he, he did, this was, uh, later in his, in his, uh, in his career, you know, he's old by now. He did that first issue. Fantastic. And then the next three issues, Jack Kirby. Yeah. Oh my God! Right, so you're saying one one God taking over well, for another God. God? Yes, uh, uh, and we don't mean it as a God God, but, no, but somebody but, of that strata. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, a king, you know, these, these are, one king took uh, took over from uh, another king. Our work, fantastic. Stories are great. The 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 thing that I love the most. Well, I'm not going to get into 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 any more details. I'm gonna do a post on this, okay? I liked it that much. I think it's that it's that important. So I'm gonna do a post on this. Let, let, just to let you know that um, that I I read it, I loved it, I recommend it, and and look for the post that I'm uh, I'm gonna do on this, okay? Okay. How about you? What's what, what, my next one? What's your next? What's, what's my your next? my next one. My next one is, I guess, a continuation. Um, because this is the expanding universe of Ashley Garcia. Ah! And I, I thought this was season two. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It's a continuation of season one. Really? So what they're saying is a part two to season one. Part one, if you recall on my, uh, on my post uh, for Women's Empowerment Month, mm -hmm. I gave it five great geeks. Right. The first eight episodes. This is six episodes. Um, it's an American comedy web television series created by Mario Lopez and Seth Curlin. Uh, it follows a prodigy of that's 15 years old. Uh, she actually has already graduated with a PhD in robotics and a PhD. It's double PhD, fellas, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and and what, she's like almost 15? She, she, she's 15 years old. Yeah. She's Latin, uh, Mexican. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she is. She works for NASA. That's why she went to the West Coast to work for for NASA. And she's living with her uncle. Paulina Chavez is the lead actress. She generally pulls off the responsibility well. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a 15 year old that's gotta be the lead of this show. Right. Right. And she does a fantastic job. And she's you know the support. Adults are are really good. Her uncle. Now, now, can can I ask you something? Yeah, go ahead. So, would you say that it, the, these episodes uh, live up to the the, the first eight? Or, or is it, is no. It, no, no, no. The thing is, it still has heart. But I'll tell you, like the first eight episodes, I cried like after every episode. I know that's that, that, that's you can't why. you can't keep that. And, and, and let me tell you. Be, <laughs> People go back, go back to go to our blog, uh, go, look up, look up the the post that he he did on on Ashley Garcia. On Ashley Garcia, please look. At, uh, not only is it was it, uh, uh, fabulously written, but it's fabulously informative. We adopted this show. We we promoted. I love we, this show. We promoted this yeah. show. We went out of our way to promote this show, and and then, ah, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, well, it's just that I think. With even though this it's supposed it's six episodes and the other one is eight episodes, those two episodes really like left me with a hole. I, I it wasn't enough, you know. It's it, it, and it was just getting to the drama part where it ends. And and you know I, I like that you know you want to leave with a with a, a cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. 
Um, and it's not like a deathly cliffhanger, but it's, I mean, it, when you're 15 years old, there's a lot of things that are like, yeah, the live or die. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's four and a half gray geeks, so it's a half a step below. Oh, okay. All right. not it's, not, no, it's not horrible. And I was crying like a little girl through the last episode, which is kind of like the, the feeling that you want to have mm. when, when you have this, uh. This little girl, well, not little, 15 years old, 16 years old, she uh, she really has a place in my heart. I feel very paternal toward her. And it's like when things happen to her, it's like, oh, mija. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're still promoting I'm the still show. Promoting we're the still show. promoting the yeah. show, people. <laughs> it's people. just four and a half instead we're, of five grade We years. have adopted this show. We're going to continue with this baby. Uh -huh. And we, we're urging you people, please, please check out this show. Yeah, Ashley Garcia, she is a geek. She's one of us. All righty. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's your Earthquake! Turn. <laughs> My turn? Yes, your turn. Okay. I'm still in comics. Okay. okay. Wow. The next, the next thing I read was, again, you know, the, the whole Pope era and everything. I wanted to check out The Phantom. You know, Lee Fawkes, The Phantom. The Phantom uh, has, uh, his distinction in, in history is that he is the first costume superhero. Because although they, they, you could say that you know there were uh, superheroes in the popes, because it's all prose, they had no costumes, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even even you take a character like Zorro, technically, I mean Zorro has a mask, but all he's wearing is black clothes and a cape, you know. So uh, the Green Hornet, what's he got? Green clothes. So um, the 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 Phantom is the first one. Uh, there's no spandex in those days, but he's wearing a, a, a skin tight, yeah. a skin tight uh, outfit, like you expect to see on, you know, later on we see on Superman, Batman, you know, um, the Phantom was the first. So this is his claim to fame, and he's a jungle superhero. Mm -hmm. He takes place his adventures. Excuse me, his adventures takes place in, in the jungle. So I wanted to check out uh, some of his Golden Age um, comics. comics. Unfortunately, they do not have issues 1 through 10. Okay? It starts with issue 11. Mm. It does explain that uh, the run of the comic it w goes from uh, Gold Key to Dell to Charlton to DC. <laughs> uh, um, so, um, it, it, it has a lot of uh, uh, longevity. Mm -hmm. But you can't, you can't, uh, at least Talk to trace. you can't get the 1 through 10. Oh. So, uh, so what I settled for, I, I read uh, uh, issues eleven and twelve, the first, uh, the first two issues that they had, eleven and twelve. I liked it. I liked and it. Was I, that gold key? Yeah, that was definitely that was gold, gold key. key. That was gold key. Uh, and you know, gold, uh, gold key uh, operates that you know they had that painted covers, yes. remember? Uh -huh. And and uh, and they give, give you a pin up, uh, you know. And then the and the inter interior artwork was. Was fabulous, also. It, it, simple stories because it's a simple, a simple age. Uh, uh, Self-contained short stories, uh, but plenty of action. You know, okay. Uh, they got a tiger in Africa. All right, okay. But uh, 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 no, no. It, it, it could, a lot it, of people, yeah, wouldn't know. Well, what it is is he's, there's a the bad guy is a prince who's kidnapping people and making them uh, play this game, and uh, the, if they survive, they can get whatever they want. And one of the hurdles that they have to, to get by is this tiger. Mm. Okay, now, uh, it, it's entirely possible he brought the tiger over. We're talking about a prince yeah. who's rich. <clears throat> but you did have wind up with a tiger in, in Africa. It's okay. I didn't mind. I enjoyed the comic anyway. And I recommend, um, if you're, if you're a, a, a Golden Age buff like I am, uh -huh. if you like uh, looking at the origins of comics, of origins of superheroes, like looking at pulp heroes or comic strip uh, heroes, I recommend picking up anything that you can on the Phantom. Okay, cool. You were reading comics. I was watching episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was binge watching. I finished watching Winona Earp. Yes, season three. Yes, uh, twelve episodes. 
uh, they had already started filming season four, four. when uh, they had to stop filming because of the pandemic. Right. Uh, Winona Earp is a Canadian supernatural western horror television series. Right down Try my alley. Try saying that ten times fast. Yeah. <laughs> right down my alley. Right down his alley. Uh, no, he loves that show. But based on a comic book series that I didn't know by mm -hmm. Bo Smith. Uh, Mel by who? Bo Smith. Oh, Bo Smith. And I thought you said Paul Smith. Oh, okay. I know uh, Paul Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Melanie Scrofano uh, plays the titular Earp, great great grandfather, grand granddaughter to Wyatt Earp. She fights revenants, demons, and vampires in this latest season. All right, it is an ensemble cast with a team of people that help Winona Earp battle, not the least of which is Doc Holliday, uh, Winona's sister. Baby sisters, Waverly Earp. She does the research kind of thing. They all support staff, you know. She's the main hero, and then you know, the just like pulp, the pulp, the just like the pulp heroes, like, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, there, the Nicole Hot is the uh, sheriff's deputy, and she's hot. <laughs> all right, a uh, secret government organization called the Black Badge Division is involved in it. So you get it on me, no stinking yeah. badges. <laughs> Right, so season four uh, production was halted, but it resumed, and on Sci-Fi already, the episodes have already started. All right, yeah, all so, right. All right, so even though, you know, it's a closed set, kind of like for COVID-19, right? Um, but it's Canadian, so they're probably filming in Vancouver. Yes, they are. Yeah. And it is season three, I would... Highly recommend still. I, I recommend the entire series. Series, It is four and a half great geeks, which to us is like the penultimate. Yes, yes, yes. Um, really good show. Love the quips. I told you about the yes. quips. That is very... Um, and she is uh, Melanie Scrofano. Uh, she's very happy to be back uh, filming. <laughs> she's uh, on Twitter. She's been... Uh, every time, you know, fans have been like... Excited about being able to move the COVID-19 out of their minds just to watch the show. Uh, she says she herself has been, you know, her mind focused on uh, Winona Earp because, and it's why Nona Earp. I'm sorry, that's the way they 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 want everyone to pronounce it. It's why Nona Earp. Why Nona? <laughs> All right, as opposed to Winona, the way that I've been pronouncing it. Uh, uh, so yes, highly recommend. Love the show. Love Melanie Scrofano. I love that now I'm following her on Twitter because she's... Okay, okay, I got the last of my... Not the last of my... Comics? Uh, but the last of the comics. Okay. Okay. This one I really, really loved. I was, again, looking for... The, doing that whole pulp thing. I, I, I googled... I searched Mandrake the Magician and came across two issues, two... Contemporary issues done by Marvel Comics. Oh, really? Painted artwork. Covers and interior are painted. Wow. Okay? The only reason there's two issues is that they stopped because of the... the oh, the, the virus? The virus. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it kind of left me with a cliffhanger. But, oh my God, did I, did, did, did I enjoy reading that? I'm hoping that the, that the rest of the run continues, you know, uh, that it's not just the, the first two issues. And I'm hoping that this break doesn't mess up their creativity. You know, you're on a roll, and then you have a break like this. And then Is it you, a miniseries? Or? Uh, no, it doesn't say. Oh, it may so be an, an, an ongoing... And it may be an ongoing series, which is hard to do with paintings. Yes, because the, oh, the covers okay, because that oh. can be done by somebody else. But I loved it. Oh, I love it. awesome. I, and, and so I, I highly recommend. I'll keep you in, informed as to because I if, if um, they go back to, to doing more, I want to read them. So as, as that happens, I will let you know. But you, you read comics online, Mandrake the Magician, uh, Marvel. Read these two issues. You will love it. What's your next? I have um, two more series. And I got into this, you know, I was doing the mystery thing. But before I got into the mystery thing, I was also into the espionage kick. Right. All right. So 
I saw that on Amazon they had Tom, uh, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. Okay. After you finish, I got to, I got to tell you something. Okay. About 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 that. Okay. So season one, and as soon as I got on Amazon, I saw it. And I'm like, yeah, because they always do that big thing yeah. at, the, at the at the blurb. At the eventually, back. I'm like, I, eventually, I'm going to see that. Yeah. I know that I'm eventually going to get there. Right. Uh, 2018 series, uh, season one. Eight episodes. This is the way that Amazon does it. Netflix has thirteen episodes. They do eight eight episodes. And you know, you had mentioned that you saw the first episode, and I'm like, no, I, I never got to finish watching. But what, you, but yeah, I but started you, watching. And I fell asleep. My problem is that my TV, when I had a TV, my TV was in the bedroom. So to watch TV, I, I would lie down. Automatically, I start falling asleep. So I started to watch it. I was enjoying it, but I can't out. Yeah, with me, I saw that first episode, and it just like it was so suspenseful. No, with Jack Ryan fan. Yes, from the we, movie, right? With the books, the right. books, Tom Clancy books, too. books, right? Yeah. So it's an American political spy thriller web television series that follow follows the titular character as he is yanked from his desk job as CIA analyst. And put in the field after discovering some questionable bank transfers being carried out by a rising Islamic extremist named Suleiman. And you think to yourself, this is how they discover people? And obviously, he's a doctor of economics. He's doing the financing. He finds something that looks weird. And he starts, he goes to his boss, which... Uh, so you you have Jack Ryan is being played by John Krasinski, uh, Colonel uh, God, what's his name? By Wendell Pierce, he's the he's his, his boss. Um, he just becomes his boss here, so it's he's a young character. He doesn't he, like is, him, right? They 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 start off that with Abby Cornish is in this. I love the actors, um, and so because I know the mythos, I'm like. And he's, he's now dating Dr. Uh, Abby Cornish's character. And so Ryan is a doctor of economics, former Marine, who actually believes that he can do good patriotic work without getting his hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's a CIA operative now. Um, yeah, you know, we know them for yeah, their work. work. Get, uh... No, no, I was going to say okay, something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so he doesn't want to get bogged down in the cynicism of and the negativity that burn out uh, most CIA officers. <laughs> so he's, he's, the, he's the squeaky clean character. His boss is like, you're going to have to, we're going to, let's go up, get on this helicopter. You know this stuff. And, and he goes, but I'm not, a, I'm not a field operative. He goes, well, I need you to be with me on the field. So they go. They, they start questioning people and their, you know, the measures of how they torture their, their prisoners and everything. So, you know, he's trying to stay out of it, <laughs> but he can't because he's, he's too smart. <laughs> he's ahead of everybody. So he's like, uh, he goes, while you're beating this guy up, I'm going to go question the other guy, the bodyguard. And it's just... From there, just boom, 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 boom. Every episode, I watched this in two days. Wow. Just because the eight episodes in two days, I was just like so caught up with the story. It's like I, I'm going right back to it. So, I, uh, I think I did. I consumed it all in a week because it was only eight episodes. And I mean, there's a season two. I'll get to it. But oh my god, just like boom, boom, boom. Loved. Uh, the series, I'm going to say four and a half Grey Geeks, so so far, and all the all, all the series that I've, I've I've reviewed have been four and a half Grey Geeks, I've been really really excited, you've been, you've been doing good. I enjoyed uh, everything, I didn't enjoy the movies that I watched, but right. I enjoyed the right. series alright no, wait, 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 wait <laughs> the actor that plays uh, Jack Ryan John, John Pazissi, yes is in talks with Marvel to play Reed Richards. Oh, is he? Yes. And there, and there is uh, artwork uh, online with, uh, uh, of him 
as uh, Reed Richards and the, the Fantastic Four. That might actually work. And uh, the rumor has it that Emily Blunt is going to be... His wife. Uh, His actual wife is. Is going to play the, the uh, invis suit. Invisible Woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not, not many people are aware that there was a Green Lantern animated series. Okay. Oh, that's right. From We're Bruce, from Bruce uh, Ten uh, uh, Studios, right? The artwork was done by the people who did uh, The Incredibles. Uh, fantastic looking uh, cartoon. Cartoon. Um, that's the ones that did the Batman the Animated series. But but this looks it looks like a video game. Oh, does it? Yeah. So. Um, now I'm not I'm not a huge Green Lantern fan. I like Green Lantern and I'll read Green Lantern. I enjoy it, but I'm not either. It's not like 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 Batman or Spider Man or, or or anything like that. But I, I I checked it. I checked out the series. Loved it. Loved it. It's only one season. I watched the first two episodes. The first episode is uh, longer. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like the pilot, yeah. and, and it's expanded. And then I watched the second episode. The, the reason why it got canceled was because the Green Lantern live action movie did so badly that it killed the toy, the toy sales and because there were no uh, uh, toys. Are there only two episodes? No, the, the, the whole season, oh, like, okay. like 26 episodes, oh, okay. but they canceled it after the first season, despite the fact that everybody loved it, but because it wasn't selling toys... They can't. They, yeah. they cancel the show. Merchandising is the money maker. Yes. So you don't make money on the actual product. Look at fa that. A fantastic uh, story. Uh, turns out that um, the unbeknownst to the Green Lantern Corps, the Guardians have a fringe Green Lanterns that are they call them the Frontier Lanterns. They're out on on, on the frontier of Guardian space, right? Well, somebody's killing off. Green Lanterns. And so Hal Jordan and Kilowog decide to take it upon themselves to investigate because the Guardians are um, they're, they're indecisive. So the only way to uh, the only way to get to that because it's that far in space is with this experimental ship you know Hal Jordan the uh, Test pilot, saw him and Kilowog steal the ship and take off to find to to um, find out who's killing Green Lanterns. And it turns out that there is a core, there is a Red Lantern core that is assassinating Green Lanterns. Oh, cool! And is that the whole season? It's about them. Yeah, it's about that. that and, yeah. and 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 there's revelation because uh, we got to figure out. Uh, where the Red Lanterns came from, right? They, have, they uh -huh. have to show you where the, and then it turns, it had, they show the Guardians talking, and they knew about the Red, the Red Lanterns, and it's a secret, you know. So there's all this this stuff that that, that uh, th that's what that's what happens during the course of, of the season. So I recommend it. The artwork is fantastic. The writing is is, is fantastic. It's got it's got depth. Um, you actually see. Uh, Green Lanterns die. Yeah. On in a cartoon. In, a, in in an animated series, you actually see uh, Green Lanterns uh, die. Uh, an entire planet uh, is destroyed by the Red Lanterns. Uh, an inhabited planet is destroyed by the. It it is it is. It was pretty good. hardcore. It was good. It was good. So I recommend it again. Uh, I forgot the name of it. The website that, that, that you can oh, see the comics. Yeah, uh, read comic. On, no, 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 oh, no, cartoon, cartoon on. Uh, watch cartoon online. Watch cartoon online. You can see Dr. these cartoons. Yo, it's very, yeah, you can see these cartoons for free. Yeah, Any sister, cartoon. For yeah, free. their sister websites. Yeah. So what's next, old wise one? Okay, bearded one. Uh, bearded wise one. Bugs. <laughs> I have one more. Um, uh, series that I want to talk about. It's Hannah. Hannah. Hannah yes, from also on Amazon. You were on a secret agent. Yes, case. almost. Uh, it's on eight. It's eight episodes, 2019. 
uh, season one. Um, I've also, you know, as soon as I was on Amazon, I was like, that's something I'm going to eventually watch. Uh, because I actually saw the movie that in 2013, and I loved that. Um, it's a little different, though. An American action drama web TV series based on 2011 film of the same name. So it was 2011. Uh, it stars Esme Creed uh, Miles, which is the titular character. Joel Hin Kinnaman and Morelli Enos. Morelli Enos is the bad guy. <laughs> uh, I watched the first season and loved it. I'm hooked. Uh, just like I'm hooked with Jack Ryan. I was hooked before I even watched Jack Ryan. Uh, Hannah is a 15-year-old girl, again 15 years old, uh, living with Eric, the only man she has ever known in a remote forest in Poland. Uh, Eric used to recruit pregnant women for a CIA program called Utrax, where the children's DNA was enhanced to create super soldiers. <laughs> More super soldiers! Eric has trained Hannah since she was little, knowing that the CIA is still looking for her. Uh, so, okay, so yes, it does use that trope, but it is, uh, said so from the beginning. You know Hannah is special from the beginning. You see her, you know, hunting in the forest, he's teaching her how to, and her moves are absolutely extraordinary. So, um, so you know, that's, you know, something special. And uh, so the super soldier serum thing is from the beginning. So you get a sense of why the, the CIA is after her. Um, but th there's more intrigue. There, you know, this, this show has heart. I, I was, you know, tempted to give it five Grey Geeks just because of the heart of the show. Because, yeah, you feel for this little girl who all she's known is isolation. So now she goes out in the world, she wants to be a kid. Who who wouldn't want to be, you know, want that for her? But, uh... Circumstances. She doesn't know how to, how to handle being a kid. You know, and, and, ki and kids are mean sometimes. And she can kill people. <laughs> so, basically, yeah. Basically, she's a 15-year-old female Captain America. Yeah, so... With growing pains, you know, so you know that that's gonna not not end well. But you have it has heart. It has you know uh, a, a purpose. You you kind of figuring out. Okay, so now how they're gonna figure work this out? It's I I find the first season filled with intrigue, filled with heart, filled with joy. It I, I'm giving it four and a half great geeks because I want it. I want to give it a little more space that if season two is just as good or better, I would give it five right. great geeks. Right. All right. It, so it, it is. Yeah. The only reason I've given it four and a half great geeks because I loved everything about this show. All right. I would uh, wholeheartedly recommend it. Four and a half great geeks, obviously, is right. like our I, penultimate. Yeah. yeah. Our penultimate uh, rating system. So uh, I would say. Watch this show if you're looking for something special. <coughs> Hannah is something special. I had started. I had started. The same thing happened that with, with, with you fell asleep. I fell asleep midway. I got. I got to the point where he kidnapped her uh, out of the mm -hmm. out of the hospital, mm -hmm. and that's the last thing I remember. And and I fell asleep. Yeah. So hopefully, when I get my uh, my new TV, I'll uh, you can check I'll, out I'll, these I'll two check shows. Check out Hannah and, and and Jack Ryan. Yeah, Amazon. Listen, you know how I am about uh, secret agents. Yeah, I know. Right, right on my alley. Oh my okay, I got, I got two last things that I did to get out of free. Out of jail free. Get out of to free. free? To get out of free. Why would you want to get out of free? I, I, I got out of free, so now I got to pay. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I got two things. Uh, first is I watched the pilot for a show called Mannix. Mannix was a, a private eye show in 1967 story, Mike Connors. Created by Bruce Geller, the same guy who created uh, Mission Impossible. Um, the basic premise of the show was that Mannix is an old-style, hard-boiled hard private eye who's under contract, therefore first forced to work for a high-tech organization called 
Intertech that does everything by computer. So it's it's about his struggling with the fact that he's old school, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 everything else is 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 high tech. And Intertech is supposed to be the uh, number one detective. Security uh, high tech for nineteen sixties though. 19, yeah, so they have computers, you know, they have the it's all it's all the big ones, those, yeah. yeah, with the with the spools <laughs> and, 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 and everything, but um uh it's like uh he uh every operative's office has a camera that the boss can can look at them anytime he wants. So uh Mannix walks in, hangs his jacket off on on the coat rack and he puts the coat rack right in front of the camera. To, 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 to block it. Mm -hmm. in, in the very first episode, they're having a a, a, a discussion him and his boss, and his, you know, his boss, is, you know, he's he's uh, exhorting the the, the, the the company line, mm -hmm. and he says he says, Lou, it just don't work. If I was you, I'd fire me, fire me, and and Lou says, I'm not gonna fire you. And, and he and he says you know and you know why and he says yeah because I'm the best man you got. <laughs> so he says that's right. I remember Mannix. <laughs> yeah, in, in the seventies though. Yeah. So so um, he gets uh, he winds up uh, being given an assignment uh, and uh, a retired mobster's daughter has been kidnapped. Uh, Man uh, Mannix is supposed to find the daughter. What's interesting is that the mobster is played by Lloyd Nolan, who in the 1940s was uh, Michael Shane in a series of, of, of Private Eye movies. So th that was interesting. And um, and it's sad because at the end it turns out that the daughter wasn't kidnapped. This was her way of extorting money from her father and everything. So uh, at the end, you know, he goes to, he walks into to, uh, Lou's office Right, he walked and and he interrupts a a, a meeting. He's having a, a meeting, and he goes, "Oh, Lou, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were in a meeting. Uh, I'll talk to you later." And he, and and Lou says, uh, "Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, uh, how'd it go?" And he looks at him sad, and he says, "I found the girl, you know." And he closes the door. And one of the other guys says, "Who was that guy?" And and, and the boss smiles and he says, "His name is Mannix." And of course, it goes to the movie. Ta -da, ta -da. Then I, then I, you know, loved it, loved it. Mannix was the highest, was the longest running private eye show in the history of, of TV until Magnum. Eight seasons. Uh, Mike Connors played Mannix for eight seasons. Yeah, I liked the show. Yeah. I remember watching the show, but in the 70s. Yeah. Well, yeah, because this was 67, so it finished, what, in 75, uh -huh. you know, so, yeah. So and then um, you know it went into syndication as well. So. Yeah. So um, in my uncle Earl's site, they have all the, the all eight seasons. So oh, really? Yeah. So I, I I checked out the the pilot and I and I loved it. I hi highly re recommend it. I don't remember the link for Uncle Earl's. I should have written it down. I will re write it down and 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 give it to you. It's another free site where you can see old TV shows from the fifties and sixties. For free, and entire runs of of shows. Okay, so that that was Mannix. I would give I would give this, uh, excuse me, uh, four four great geeks. Okay, absolutely, not higher because it's a little dated, but uh, four great geeks. And finally, I watched uh, uh, a movie called The Kennel Murder Case, right, the nineteen thirties. Uh, detective Philo Vance. Philo Vance was a very popular detective back in those days. There's a whole slew of Philo Vance uh, murder mysteries with William Powell from um, the, the Thin Man uh, fame, right? Uh, and my man, uh, my man Godfrey, and, and he's a very well known uh, actor. He played Philo Vance. Um, I, I especially love this movie. Uh, he, Philo Vance was the first detective to, to, to start using psychology. That's what he was uh, famous for in his books and then in, in the movies. And uh, I especially like this movie because it was not only a who done it, it was a how done it too because it is a lock room murder mystery. The body is found 
in a locked room. How, not only is it uh, uh, who killed him, but how did he die? So, uh, and, and Philo Vance takes, brings you through it. It's, 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 it's classic. It's, it's, it's beautiful. There's no, no, there's no way of, of not understanding. And of course, if you pay attention, the clues are all given. You could possibly uh, solve the, the murder before the end of the movie. So, uh, I would give, again, I would give this movie, um, uh, four gray geeks. Not four and a half, simply because um, it's dated. It, it, it is uh, 1930s. 1930s. And this was a colorized version, and the colorized version was terrible. I mean, there are scenes where, where, where the characters look like they have green skin. Okay, so the, the, the I, if I had known that, I would have turned the color off and, and just watched it in, in black and white. Um, but the, the movie is, is a great murder mystery. And uh, I recommend it. And that's how I got out of jail. So that's how you got out of jail free, huh? That's how I got out of jail free. And that's how you got out of jail free. Yeah, that is also how I got out of jail free. Um, so uh, I guess we're done with our uh, get out of jail free uh, video. A first one. Yeah. A, first, a milestone. So congratulations. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right, and uh, my name is Louis Matos. I am the mustache. And, and, and it really is. He really is Louis Matos. I, I, I can vouch for him. And I am Junior Figueroa. I beat the beard. Uh, we say thank you for watching. See you later. Hasta la vista. Take it easy. And, and peace. Thank you for watching this episode of Get Out of Jail Free with the mustache and the beard. Two gray geeks changing the world one post at a time. Follow these two gray geeks on Facebook. Give them a like and share their post. Don't forget to leave a comment.